I am in Hollywood. Now if you're planning to come to LA and you look at tour guides on things to do, you will read that this is a complete tourist trap you should avoid. It's seedy and I'm here to tell you, well, they're not entirely wrong about that. It definitely is a tourist trap and it has its seedy places, but there's a reason people flock here. I think it's got a lot of interesting things to see, a lot of history, and I'm gonna share it with you now. I'm starting here at the corner of La Brea and Hollywood Boulevard. It has this sculpture called The Four Ladies of Hollywood, Dolores Del Rio, Anna Mae Wong, Dorothy Dandridge, and Mae West. Now, on top, they used to have a figure of Marilyn Monroe, but she kept getting stolen. So the last time she was stolen, they just didn't replace her. Some critics say that this is gaudy and it should be replaced. I don't know, kind of gaudy, but I still like it. Anyway, this is also the official start of the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So let's head on down Hollywood Boulevard. The Walk of Fame honors celebrities in different categories and on each star there is a symbol in a circle that tells you what they were known for. A microphone is radio, a TV screen, television, a movie camera, movies, a record player is for music, and then there are two masks which it's kind of a catch-all for everything else like uh, it's supposed to represent theater but also represents opera or just general entertainment they don't have an icon for YouTube but I think they definitely should a couple of blocks down Hollywood Boulevard is where you really get into the uh, action where you've got uh, Grumman's Chinese theater over here and you've got the Dolby Theater over there. You've got tour vans. Uh, so we're going to go over there next, but I wanted to show you something on this side of the street first. I am standing in front of the El Capitan movie theater. And what I wanted to show you is that if you look across the street, right through this shopping center, you will get a great view of the Hollywood sign. All right. Let's head over to the other side of the street and Grumman's Chinese Theater. This is the center, the tourist trap, <laughs> the most touristy section of Hollywood Boulevard, which is Grumman's Chinese Theater. Now, this was Sid Grumman's third theater, although it is his most famous theater, and I think a lot of the reason, aside from just the unique architecture, the great history that it's had is the handprints and footprints that he has here in front of it that goes back to the 1920s when this opened. These handprint and footprints actually started as an accident. The story is that Mary Pickford, who was a partner with Sid Grumman in building this, stepped on the concrete after it had been poured, before it had completely set, and that sparked the idea to do the handprints and the footprints. And so this tourist section is born. Last week, this was tricked out for the opening of Planet of the Kingdom of the Apes. On the sidewalk in front of Grumman's Chinese Theater, you can see there are all kinds of vendors. Food vendors, uh, artists going to do your portrait, all kinds of people hawking things. This is where you get into the trap of the tourist trap because some of that's kind of interesting. Next to Grumman's Chinese Theater is the Dolby Theater, and this is where the Academy Awards are. But there's also something else here that is really important. Of all the stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, there's only one that has never been walked on before, and that is Muhammad Ali. And the reason is because he did not want anyone to walk on the name Muhammad. As you walk into the Dolby Theater from Hollywood Boulevard, you will be in the awards walk. On each side are columns that have years 
and the best picture for those years and it goes decades into the future for future best picture winners and then it ends with this amazing staircase that leads up into the Dolby Theater where the Academy Awards are given out. Next to the Dolby Theater is this shopping mall. Now, in terms of shopping, it's got the same stores as pretty much anywhere else, but there are a couple of interesting features here that I'm gonna show you. If you walk to the back of the shopping center to the second floor or the third floor, you are gonna get a great view of the Hollywood sign. If you want to find out more about where you can see the Hollywood sign, then check out my video, Nine Ways to See the Hollywood Sign. We're gonna head on up to the third floor towards the front of the shopping center and then up to a secret deck. On the third floor at the front of the shopping center is this fantastic terrace. You can see there is hardly anyone up here. I actually came up here and watched the Hollywood Christmas Parade. You get a fantastic view of Hollywood Boulevard. It's right across the street from where Jimmy Kimmel Live is filmed. It's next to the El Capitan Theater. This is a fantastic place to take it all in. All right, we've got more to see, so let's keep going. This is the Egyptian theater. It is closed for a special event right now. But this was Sid Grauman's second movie theater and it opened in 1922. And this is where the very first red carpet was held when he opened it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that great walkway to the entrance. That was the very first red carpet. I was here last week doing a photo walk with a local photo club and they let us come in. We're getting a private tour of the Egyptian theater. It's fantastic. Netflix owns it now and they have just completed a complete remodel, bringing it back to its former glory. Notice the speakers are suspended from the ceiling because they wanted to keep that beautiful ceiling as it was when it opened in 1922. Right up the street from the Egyptian is Musso and Frank's Grill. This is the oldest restaurant in Hollywood, founded in 1919. And if you want to find out more about it, then click on the information box above. I did a video. At Wilcox Street, you have this incredible mural. It was painted in 1983. It's been vandalized. It's faded over time, so I don't know how much longer it's going to be there. I think the Hollywood Conservancy, uh, Mural Conservancy, is trying to preserve it, but we'll see what happens. But as long as it's here, you should stop by and see it. So it's really hard to tell, but this is Shirley Temple and that's W.C. Fields. She is sitting in his lap. It's kind of a joke because W.C. Fields hated children. <laughs> so the mural artist did this as a joke. Also, Woody Woodpecker, who is up here, is actually part of the original mural. When I was here last week, my friends were speculating that it was added in later, but no, it was part of the original mural. Some of the people you can still see who they were, but some of them, their faces are just too washed out to tell. So this is a very cool place and definitely worth your time to visit. Scum and Villainy Cantina is modeled after the cantina at Moss Eisley Spaceport in Star Wars. I have a link to the clip from Star Wars below if you're not sure what I'm talking about. Uh, I did a video on this a couple of years ago, so check it out. I was not able to get here for Star Wars Day this year. Truly regret that. At the famous intersection of Hollywood and Vine, you can see Capitol Records in the background. To be honest, aside from the sign, there's really nothing here to see. More stars on the Walk of Fame, but still cool. 
to be at this famous intersection. Just past Vine Street is the Pantages Theater. It began its life in the 1930s as a movie theater, but it was renovated and it is now one of the premier Broadway theaters here in LA. I've seen a lot of uh, Broadway theater here, including Wicked, which I'm so excited it's coming back. Anyway, this is where I am going to leave you. I hope you can see why coming to Hollywood is not a tourist trap. There is so much to see here. There is actually a lot more than I showed you. I just walked along Hollywood Boulevard, but there's still sunset. There is still a lot to see. Anyway, I hope this helped you find your adventure. Thank you for watching.